this is Mark Carson on the left and Colby Johnson, who's a, a senior captain on the team. First of all, since we don't talk about him often, can you tell me about what he means to this program? Yeah, first of all, uh, Colby's our leader, unquestioned leader, uh, off-season stuff, and then of course on the field leading us um, as our captain, one of our, one of our four captains, great in the weight room, great in the uh, film room, anywhere we're at um, on campus. Away from campus, he's kind of our conscience of our team, and uh, is an all-around leader, and then a uh, ferocious football player. Uh, What's his role on the field? So he, he starts uh, on the O-line and uh, and on the D-line, so one of, one of the few guys who can physically handle going both ways in the trenches, and he can do it, and he does a great job. Um, you know, I ask your teammates, um, every week people expect to roll over you guys. Here's this little team from, I mean, I guess it's Arcadia, but whatever uh you guys have 12 and one that's not by accident you're the one seed in division nine not by accident um how fun is it to be a part of this group and have so much success it's really fun because these guys like you said they expect to to beat us and then we go out there we smack them in the mouth and they're not expecting that and it's it's really fun first quarter first quarter to see them how they react to that because they're either gonna smack us back or they're gonna Old, yeah. yeah. Or they might get mad because you didn't send them the right film, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, Mark, uh, what does Santa Monica do well? Uh, very balanced offense, uh, really big up front, so they're, they're going to give the QB time to throw, and he's he can sling it all over the field, and then uh, they like to run behind those big guys as well. So uh, balanced offense is, is uh, something you got to prepare uh, for, you know, both both aspects of your defense right up front and, and the back half as well so it makes it tough and then defensively um very well coached physical team um who doesn't make very many mistakes okay so with you as a player as a leader how do you keep your uh you know i mean you guys are still kids you're mature you're intelligent but you go up against bigger teams this and that and the other how difficult is it or what's your message to them for friday night for friday night for my team or yes all right so I'd say just to make sure we give it our all, and even if we're losing, make sure win or lose, we we leave it all on the field because we don't want to we don't want any regrets. So. And do what you guys do well. Yeah, do what okay. we do best, and leave it all on the field. Yeah. So aside from turnovers, penalties, the normal stuff for any team, what does Rio Hondo Prep have to do to come back home as CIF champions? I think we got to out hit them, you know, which is which is always a challenge when you're undersized, but. Um, take pride in that and so uh, that's our goal to out hit our, our opposition. So knowing that you guys don't throw the ball often if you had to if you're down two scores if you're down three scores do you guys have confidence that that uh, Alex can bring you guys back? Yeah 100% I have, I have confidence that Alex and the receivers can bring us back in the game and yeah for sure and we got plans for that you know uh, contingencies for everything if we're down and hopefully you're not in that yeah, moment right? Right right but if yeah, we do. Uh, get in that spot, we'll, we'll have a plan to. What grade are you? I'm a senior. Okay, so is this even more special for you? Yeah, yeah. It's more special because, well, I always thought like, because I've I've been starting since I was a sophomore, so I always thought like, oh, we didn't we didn't win the playoffs. It's okay. I got next year. I got next year. But now that it's like my last year, yeah, it's really special because especially making it this far in my last season. So yeah. So if not not assuming anything about Friday. But let's just say that the season was over and you're talking to your teammates through the camera. What do you want them to know about your time with them? My time with you guys has been my favorite but my whole life. And I know that for the rest of my life, I'll always remember you guys and the impact that you guys have had on my life and hopefully how I've impacted your lives. Um, you know, I talk to Mark a lot. I've never spoken to you, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions in a row. Um, what has the, how has the coaching staff and the program impacted your life? Well... It's nice because they're not just there to help you in football and all the other sports. They're there to be, you know, like a guide to you and be someone you can look up to and ask questions if you need any help in school or just at home or spiritually, you know, because we're a Christian school. So if I ever need anything spiritually, I can go ask any of the coaches and they'll help me out. What do you appreciate most about this kid? Uh, like I said, his leadership. But um, if I've had to pick one character trait, it would be his toughness, man. I mean, he's just um, as tough as they come. And, and I know a lot of people might say that about their players, but um, he really is. And he's not going to come off the field. Okay. 
And I'm sure that's probably the way you want it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and he's he's going to go up and he's going to be matched up against their biggest, best players. Okay. Um, and we know we can count on them. So it's toughness. So I asked them. I'm going to ask both of you. Um, um, quarterbacks get the headlines in games. Running backs, receivers sometimes. Who's someone um, that you just like, man, this guy has never gotten enough credit for what he does for this team? If I had to choose one, yeah, I would choose Matthew Brewer. Okay. Because, you know, he's a transfer, and he didn't really play much football when he was younger. He didn't really know that much about our school. Okay. And he came in, and we just put him in, you know, and he's been doing great at center, which is his first time ever playing it. And I think, yeah, he's been playing great this whole season. Okay. Unexpected, but, yeah. Mark? Man, I would have to say, um, speaking on the defensive side of the ball, maybe a um, – you talked about Josh Curtis who's come on come on of late. Um, another guy who's done really well for us on defense that probably no one's heard of is Andy Zhu. And, um, Was that the XU? XU, okay. yeah. He, he's a, a D lineman, um, not the biggest guy if you look up his height and weight. But um, his tenacity – Again, his toughness is just shown through, and he was a guy who was on scout team, and he kept making plays. And we're like, okay, let's see what this guy can do with the starting unit, and he he earned himself the second half of the season with a starting job. And uh, the guy, if you saw him walking around, would not look like a, a football player at all. But uh, I would say Andy's the guy who's been the biggest surprise, the most pleasant surprise, and really happy for okay. him. Okay, so I'm just gonna add one more to this. End it with you, Coach. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I lost track of what I was going to say. Um, oh, every team has its own identity. I mean, whether you have Gio, whether you have Jonathan, whether you have Bryant, whether you have Alex, all these guys. Year, yeah. This 2023 group, what are you most? Uh, what do you respect most about this this team, this this particular team? Man, I would have to say. For me, and I don't yeah. want to put words in your mouth, but since I've been covering you for five or six years, yeah. I've covered you when you've had teams that had more break. 80 yard touchdowns yeah. more this and that and the other and here they are in the finals I, I, I almost feel like they knew they didn't have the explosiveness that they had to do everything together everybody had to do their part yeah, and for me that's pretty special that's a great point um i think yeah the togetherness the brotherhood <coughs> we always have great brotherhood in rio but um these guys have traveled together over the summer i really kind of coalesced that and um yeah i think a lot of teams will talk about brotherhood but these guys really uh, they live with each other right okay and, um, they're very tight. They are in a lot of the same classes, right? They're with each other year round playing different sports. Um, and they lean on each other that way. And so the fact that we don't have that superstar, so to speak, uh, I think is only a plus for them and that they know they gotta lean on each other. And every guy, every guy has to do his job, whether it's a scout player in practice uh, or a two-way starter. They all understand their roles and there's no selfishness, there's no one looking for the limelight, and so I think that's probably uh, the biggest thing. You watch our guys, you know, there's no grandstanding after a play like you see on TV all the time. They just go back to huddle and line back up and go play again. So, and and so I'll add one for you as well. Last question. Um, can you explain to people how much the team chemistry, the love that you share with your teammates, how has that impacted your success? Well, you know, most teams, they don't necessarily, they're not always friends, you know, on both sides of the ball, but since we're friends on both sides of the ball, we can pick each other up. We can, in practice, especially like if a guy needs help, if a guy needs uh, encouragement, we can encourage each other. And it's like, hey man, like you need to do better, but you can do this instead. You can help each other out, figure out, work out problems together. And then off the field, you know, if a guy's struggling with school, we can help each other out in school. Like, oh, maybe we should do homework together, stuff like that. So okay. just working together to figure out every problem.